So, good morning guys. It is currently uh, uh, 7.12 in the morning uh, here in London. Um, I just finished up. Uh, first thing I do whenever I wake up is I sit in front of my Jew. Usually I'm butt naked, uh, so obviously I spared you guys that expense. Yeah, usually I sit in front of my Jew and then I journal. And I do that for you know five ten minutes. I uh, wake up at six fifty, and then I'm here in the shower uh, for seven, and then basically just shower, meditate, and get to my desk for eight a.m. and start work. Obviously, it's a little different now that I don't have a gym. A month ago, I did come back from uh, Cape Town, and I was there for two months, and uh, all gyms, everything like that, was open there. So uh, yeah, my schedule is a little different. Usually, I do work out first thing in the morning. And yeah, I thought I'd bring you along for a realistic day in the life of an agency owner. So. With no further ado, today's gonna to be a pretty bulk standard day. I'll leave timestamps now if you want to skip to anything specifically and not look at the rest of my boring day. But yeah, here's a bit of context as to what it's like being an agency owner um, when everything's locked down. First things first, let me show you what the OR stats were like from last night. So uh, not the best, not the worst. Uh, my HRV was crazy low, I'm not sure why that is. Uh, let's see, sleep, two hours, 24 deep. Uh, three minutes latency, one hour 52 REM. So yeah, that was today and that was yesterday. So not the best, not the worst, but all in all, I'm feeling pretty ready for the day. By the way, I picked up this uh, vlogging camera, this, the Sony RZ, whatever the hell it is. But um, anyways, it's um, been so long since I've like vlogged with a small little camera like this. And I will, I'm just looking at the screen on the side. One thing I've always hated about Sony's is they said that they fixed their skin tones with this camera. I still don't think they did. I still think the skin tones are terrible. I look white as hell. Anyways, I'm not a beauty vlogger. This doesn't matter. It's kind of what the day. So, kick off with the 20 minute meditation. Yeah, let's get the day started. Hello there. So real quick, let me just run you through what I've been working on this morning. So uh, at my agency, IG Media, we are expanding quite rapidly. I guess the thing that's that's broken us right now is not actually the amount of clients that we're at right now. It's the fact that out of our last, like three out of our last five clients are all spending above 10K a day. And in fact, I think today is billing date for one of our performance fees. So you'll actually see that later today, uh, what our performance fee was uh, in the first month with one of these clients. But anyways, the reason I say this is because there's a big difference between spending like, you know, a K a day or two K a day for an e-commerce business and then getting to a point where you're spending like seven, eight, 10 K a day. You know, that's a real big difference. And actually I will say one of the clients last month, uh, we weren't spending, we were probably spending like an average of like, actually, let me just look it up. I remember Danny, uh, who's my CMO mentioned it was, uh, I remember Danny, who's my CMO mentioned it was like 2.4 million crown or something like that. Uh, a Swedish crown. Swedish Kroner, uh, 2.4123. Yeah, so we spent 207K so that, uh, pounds, so that is, so that's right around like $280,000. So yeah, almost like $10,000 a day. But anyways, long story short, um, the issue is once you start spending this sort of money for clients, um, there's a lot of load balancing that needs to happen. So with a lot of these clients, we've got like not one account, with one specific client, we've got 10 ad accounts. And as I said, with, large, with some of these larger budget uh, accounts, you know, we're load balancing between anywhere from like three to, as I said, with that one client, 10 accounts. So that was really the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, you know, I knew that we needed to hire a new performance marketer back in like early January. Um, and we were kind of fine until like early February. It is now, uh, I don't know why I'm looking at my watch, there's no date function. It's now mid March and yeah, it's evidently clear we really need a new performance marketer like six weeks ago. And it's funny because when we started getting a breaking point, that's when like, obviously more fuel was added to the fire and we just got like these sort of three behemoth clients. So, um, so yeah, we're right around 20 clients at the moment with the agency handling it incredibly well, still maintaining the incredible standards we have at the agency, but Danny, Luis, Kieran, like my team is they're, they're done. Like they're, they're so burnt out. Um, so 
as a leader, I should have really made this more of a priority. But this time when we've gone about hiring, we've used a very different uh, sort of approach and it's worked incredibly, incredibly well. So far, we've had around 150 responses. The quality has been incredible. And that's across Upwork, uh, Facebook groups, uh, Reddit. We're running Facebook ads at the moment for the job position, uh, LinkedIn ads, and a whole host of other stuff. It's been really, really interesting this time compared to last time that we went about hiring. So yeah, basically today at the moment, I'm just checking in on the LinkedIn ads, the Facebook ads. I'm going through all of the new responses. I have 47 new responses that I haven't had a chance to look at in the past couple days. And then any good candidates, Danny then takes a preliminary interview, probably a very similar thing to the last time uh, we went about hiring last uh, July for the- Sorry guys, this camera cut out. I'm already having some issues with it. It's the most expensive, latest and greatest vlogging camera, but um, yeah, not, not really a fan of it so far. But anyways, as I was saying, uh, any good candidates, basically Danny is, I'm gonna sift through these uh, 47 new responses. Danny, my CMO is gonna have a, a call with them. It's gonna be probably very similar to what we did last year, which was a hundred, you know, we got 150, 40 ish applications. Uh, from there, Danny took around 45, 50 interviews. And then uh, we streamlined that down to like seven really good candidates. And then from there, we actually gave like a list of like 20 really good candidates to our CPA students. So this time, I think we're probably gonna get like 250, 300 candidates because we're spending uh, a decent amount of money actually getting these people through ads, uh, Facebook ads and LinkedIn ads. So we'll probably get like 250, 300 candidates. Danny will probably take 75 to 100 interviews, so a lot, a lot of interviewing. And then from there, we'll probably compile a, a list of 50 really good media buyers. And then from there, there are probably five or six that are like world-class. I'm talking like the top 001% of performance marketers, advertisers, media buyers, whatever you want to call it. Um, this time, I think I'll probably hire two rather than one just to kind of future-proof slightly. And then the other list of, you know, 48 or, you know, the other list of like 40 to 50 performance marketers, we're actually going to give that to the Meridian Mastermind students. So that's launching this summer. It's sort of our highest level of service and support. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to launch a mastermind for a long, long time. And I think everything that's going on in the world, uh, the kind of the craziness of it is kind of coming to an end and just that face to face, I think there's nothing more valuable to it. So that'll be a year long mastermind. And as I said, because we're so meticulous and spend so much time and money when it comes to hiring, it's a shame that sort of all these other good candidates go to waste, which is why we give it to some of our students at the education company. So um, yeah, let me just kind of show you what, what the process is like. So you can see right here, this is my beautiful <laughs> CMO Danny. Yeah, you can tell, you can tell he's a CMO and very analytical. <laughs> but um, yeah, so basically this is the page that they come to unless they've come in from Upwork. Um, yeah, so this is kind of the page they come to and then at the bottom they fill out this application. And um, yeah, so far as I've, I've got like 47 responses that I haven't looked at, uh, but you can see some very interesting, you know, some of the questions that we ask. And obviously, uh, you know, for members of CPA, we're, we're actually gonna add a two hour segment to the vault, you know, the, which is the whole live aspect of uh, CPA, basically just going through all the ads, all the ad copy we wrote, how we managed to get so many applications, what we ask, uh, the entire process, like over the shoulder walkthrough. But anyways, you can see right here, tell me about some of the most difficult problems you've worked with and how did you solve them in your life work somewhere else? It's interesting because some people will talk about things in their personal life, um, relationship, like you get some very, and then, you know, a lot of actual business or work. So it's very, very interesting. Uh, one, another really interesting question, um, when if ever is lying permissible? Uh, it's very interesting just to ask some of these sort of high level uh, questions. Uh, and then what was your biggest frustration with your previous boss, employer or client? So yeah, basically, as I said, the mornings is just kind of like my quiet time, you know, from 8 a.m. all the way until my team calls start at 3 p.m. And then earliest any sort of client check-in calls or sales calls start will be around like 1 p.m. So it's nice because I got that like 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. period and time frame just for myself to, to focus on some of the high level stuff with the agency. So yeah, that's what I'm working on this morning. So it is midday and that means that it's time to get some exercise in. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, my exercise routine or my workout routine is just so off at the moment. For me, it's just a matter of, you know, 30 minutes, well, no, it's not 30, 45 minutes, uh, cause I'm in monk mode at the moment. 45 minutes, just getting it done. And that's pretty much it. So, you know, probably three times a week, I'll just do a little at home 
uh, push-ups, pull-ups, weighted push-ups, pull-ups, and then you know four times a week, I'll just go for like a little run. Uh, and I'll be honest, I'm you know I'm I'm kind of just coasting at the moment. Um, you know, last year I really pushed myself physically. I ended up uh, boxing for six weeks, like every single day, twice a day, and had a fight at the end. Uh, I ran a marathon with like 14 days prep. That was definitely an interesting experience. So. Yeah, right now at the moment, you know, nothing's open, no gyms, nothing like that. I came back from South Africa and there I pushed myself a lot. Uh, every day was training really, really hard in the morning with my buddy Pete. Uh, but now that I'm back in London, it's, as I said, you know, it's different parts of your life. You focus on different things. I know that, you know, kind of between the, when I came back mid-Feb to mid-April, which is when gyms open again in the UK, you know, it's really just a matter of maintenance and not really pushing myself too much. Um, on another note, a lot of people have asked me uh, where this is from. It's a company called Free Train, and people are like, oh, is that like a heart rate monitor, this, that, etc., etc. No, I actually track my heart rate with my Apple Watch. This. So, as I said, you know, I had had no running experience whatsoever, and then I just kind of got into running like <laughs> mid November, and then early, like literally three weeks later, I was like, yeah, you know, why not run a marathon in two weeks? So I ended up running a half marathon, like no. Yeah, I, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I was just holding my phone in my hand for you know, literally two hours, uh, and now I, I was like, okay, yeah, this is not very practical. So then I looked at one of those armband things, and those suck. So yeah, this is a free train. This just puts my phone right here, so I can have my AirPods. Uh, put my key right here, and then uh, if I need anything else, like if I uh, want to do cards or something, this isn't really good. So I usually just put them in these. Uh, so these are actually for those of you guys who are curious. These are early prototypes of the cargos from the new uh, principal collection from my clothing line Gadji. Um, yeah, these are early prototypes. The next round of prototypes is actually meant to come in like four or five days. Um, so yeah, these are still very, very early days, but I've just kind of given up at the moment. I wear these all day. We have them in a few different colors um, and they're comfortable in the day and I can literally just go straight from working to like just changing top, putting on shoes. And um, yeah, just I work, I work out in these, I work in these, I train in these. Um, like honestly, I just kind of live in these at the moment. So um, yeah, these will be uh, launching with the rest of Principal Collection end of April. Uh, for anyone who's wondering what shoes I'm wearing, these are the uh, Alpha Fly Next or Vapor Fly Next Percent. These are the Vapor Fly Next Percent. Hold on a sec. I got these as well, which are the Alpha Fly Next Percent. Um, oh, yeah, there's still some mud at the bottom. Anyways, yeah, I got these. Now, I actually bought these for the first time in uh, Cape Town, and I hated them. Like, literally, I, I ran in them twice, and then I gave them to my buddy, because uh, I was like, man, my house is so dirty. This is the only downside I've realized to having a four-floor house. I went from having a two-bedroom apartment last time, and I stayed there for like two and a half years, and then I was like, that entire time I was thinking, like, let me upgrade, let me upgrade. Uh, ended up moving into here, which is a four-floor house. I live in Knightsbridge in London. I used to live uh, further down, like uh, more like central Chelsea area. But, um, but yeah, so I moved into a four-floor house, and it's just, it's the worst. It's funny, guys, because everyone thinks that they want to, like, get a bigger house and more cars and, like, Man, as you go along your journey, you just realize like you just want less stress in your life. So, uh, you know, it's one thing to have things in your life or nice things in your life. It's another thing to maintain them. That's one of the reasons I don't have a car. It would just like stress me out. Uh, you know, it's sitting uh, there having to do maintenance, still blah, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, I don't know how I got this. Oh yeah, dirty house. Um, these as well, uh, for anyone who's getting into running, strongly recommend these. I ran my marathon in these. Um, these are kind of like marathon running shoes. Um, so my best piece of advice to you, if you're doing serious running, like if you're about to run a marathon, right, for sure, go for these. But I see a lot of people doing like, uh, you know, I see a lot of people doing like 3Ks, 5Ks, 10Ks in these, and it's just like, and, and you will injure yourself in these, trust me. Um, these, these are a lot more forgiving, like these are the perfect blend, you know, so it still has a carbon fiber plate in here, same as this, um, but like, honestly, like you, you'll do your knees in with these. Uh, and either way, I want to say I'm just not a fan of these, full stop which is funny because this is the second pair I've owned. I've caved in twice, but whatever. Let's go for a run. Simple run for today. Been doing a lot of training at uh, 160, or sorry, 159 uh, BPM. Basically, when I ran the marathon, my, uh, I mean, I did in sub four hours with 14 days training, 
which like I'm not even gonna celebrate or like take credit for because I didn't even think I was gonna be able to do it so it was honestly just like a total shock to me as well but um yeah my uh, heart rate was savagely high like savagely high um so yeah if you're trying to run at a decent pace with lower uh, BPM, I think that's really what I need to work on. Too close. All right. Yeah, there we go. So, ladies and gents, back from my run. Now, I'm about to hop on one of two onboarding calls today. This is actually a client that I signed up yesterday. No, day before. A uh, client that I signed up day before. And without going into too much detail, because I did the full call breakdown all the way from demo to sales call. And obviously, I'll be breaking down this onboarding call as well. So for those of you guys in CPA, just go there. It's going to be in the vault. So I'm not going to give you guys the full, like, few hour breakdown of how this client came about. So I'll just throw in a 60 second highlight of the sales call here. <coughs> I can imagine yeah. your frustration. You're managing twice as much spend. It seems like they're. Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it just seems like they're kind of fucking you around. Um, I don't, uh, you know what it is with them? It's they, they speak to someone that assumes doesn't. I, I mean, I think they, they're good with working with people who don't know how Facebook works. So they just make up stories and say, oh, you know, this is how it works. And and this is this is how ROAS is maintained and, and it's built. I mean, they were spending, I think, loss uh, from the first to, to the eighth of first to the seventh of this month um they were spending around 5k a day and it would just like it would just be shit it would just be 1.3 1.4 1.5 return last and when our minimum is two um i mean that's where we break even that's not even where where we uh where we make make anything on top so i mean we were doing about one point uh let's say they were doing 1.3 and 1.4 and and it took them and then again it, they didn't overnight just spend four they they did um, they sp started spending a, a K, then two, then three, then four, slowly until they got to the point where they were spending four, four and a half. Um, I, I cut them off on, on the seventh. Um, I then off the bat just released 4K and spend overnight myself, fresh, fresh uh, campaigns, an all new creative, all new copy. And we're sitting at 2.6, 2.7. Um, they're charging us 10%. So 10% of whatever they spend in a month um, is, is their fee. 10% ad spend. Yeah. Okay. Um, I assume you're a bit more pricey than that. No, 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 no. These guys are fleecing you. Oh, are they? No. Here, here's the thing. So, you know, I have, um, so a little bit about me, obviously I have my advertising agency, but I also uh, run an education company uh, called Green Agency. So yeah. we, you know, we're, you know, we're literally uh, the people that, uh, you know, we're the experts that all the, you know, agencies in the world come to learn from. And, you know, uh, one of the, yeah, uh, our, one of our favorite things is, is to make fun of agencies that charge a percentage of ad spend. Cause it, it yeah. here, here's the issue, right? If, if an agency ever charges you a percentage of ad spend or percentage of revenue, just leave the meeting because here's the issue. Okay. Our incentives need to be aligned, right? So, yeah. yeah. We only, we should only get paid when we're making. So I actually closed this client on a twenty eight hundred pound a month plus five percent return on ad spend. So at this stage in my agency, I get most of I'd say probably seventy eighty percent of our uh, overall agency revenue from performance fees. So you can see right here, I made some notes during uh, the actual call. I don't know how well that shows up. So basically, this company did. Uh, they've been around uh, around six seven months. They did two point five million pounds. In the first uh, six seven months, uh, February they spent 55k, Jan they spent 108k, and now they're at a point where they're spending around five-ish thousand pounds a day, like five six thousand pounds a day. So I'm just gonna try and show you that top bit right there. As you can see, the goal is with them uh, in in six months is to be spending 500k a month and bringing in around 1.3 million pounds a month. So that'd be around an 800,000 pound a month uh, a return on ad spend. And then you also saw right below that we charge them 2,800 pounds plus 5% return on ad spend. I'll go ahead and pop up that base retainer. You'll notice that it's something above like, it's like 3,300 basically it's 2,800 pounds plus it's a British client. So we charge that on top. Anyways, with this client, we estimate first month, we'll make them probably around like 100 to 200K return on ad spend. So that's a 5,000 to 10,000 kind of within that bracket. 5,000 to 10,000 pound performance fee on top of the 2,800 pounds. And if things go as planned or able to hit their benchmark that they wanted um, in six months, 
in six to 12 months, which is 800K a month return on ad spend, that'd be a 40,000 pound a month performance fee. So yeah, as I said, the last like six weeks or so, we've just been getting these really big whale uh, performance fee clients. Um, one of which, as I said, I know I need to build today. So I'll ask Danny what the final number is on that and then we'll build them. I'll show you guys what that ends up coming out to. But I'm one minute late, so I'm gonna close these blinds, turn on my nice lighting uh, and just do the onboarding call with this client. So I'll give you a 60 second recap of how that went. Uh First kind of generic question is right now, where is the majority of your traffic coming from? Uh, it would be from Instagram, uh, number one, and then it would be from Facebook, Google, and then Snapchat. Okay, all, all, all paid. Yeah, all paid. Um, we don't we don't have any you know massive uh, like organic stuff. It's all it's majority paid. I say eighty percent of it's paid. Got it. Perfect. I, I saw I saw your guys' hero video where you explain and, and, and show very cinematically the product that had a bunch of views. So I'm I'm curious to know how how did that go? Like if you if you run ads like on YouTube, how how did it go? Because we like to run ads on YouTube. Yeah, uh, agency does that. I don't do that. I don't. I, I I have no experience in Google. I have no experience in Snapchat. I don't no, no, no. But just in general, how it went. Like, do you oh, know if, um, it, if it was profitable? Or just Google, Google in general. YouTube, YouTube specifically. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you. I just okay. look at, I just look at Google in general as as a whole. And how how does Google in general uh, do? Uh, Google, they we do about uh, well, we spend about a k a day, and they bring in about a four four to five return. No, that's fine. Okay. Cause yeah, maybe we can scale harder on, on YouTube. We we've been trying to push them to go harder than than only spending uh a thousand, but I, I don't know, they, they just won't budge. Okay. Okay. If, if you can give us in the meantime access to those two other accounts to the other account because I think we don't have it on these two emails, that'd be great. I think the, our number one country is the, the UK. We dominate here in the UK. Our, our conversion is the cheapest here in the UK. Um, secondly, EU. Uh, EU does also like uh, well, similar to similar to the UK, um, but the US, uh, Australia, and New Zealand is um, a market that we haven't massively touched in. And whenever whenever they have tried to, um, it's always been just shit. Hmm. That's okay. funny. For most of our clients, the other way around. US always the best performing. UK is the most. I mean, if you, if you can make US the best performing, then then I'll I'll be happy to take it. But I mean, from, from experience, I'm yeah. up for the challenge. <laughs> oh, we tell my my friend about the agency. Bro. <laughs> All right, real quick before you have the interview, right? Yeah. Okay, before the interview, I need to hop on the uh, platform call. Uh, before that. Um, and then wait, when's our new, our new client call is in after that. So like an hour. Okay. Um, can you send a loom to once your interview is done, can you send a loom to, um, and just go over, um, what our return on ad spent, like how much we spend, uh, basically just our performance fee for last month. If you can bring that down. Yeah, for sure. It's from 17th of Feb to 17th Feb. Yeah. Uh, wait, let me just check the billing. 17th to 17th. Okay. Yeah, awesome. yeah, it's it, it's five percent on anything above hundred k, your yeah. return on spend. Yeah, I could tell you now if you want. Okay. Uh, let me just put it up over here. The plan by one. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so from the seventeenth of Feb over here, all the attribution. I mean, we'll still get attributed some sales later, but. Mm. Well, we we spent two million and seventy eight thousand crowns and made back four million seven hundred and fifty seven thousand crowns. So if I were to do the math over here real fast, that's four million seven hundred and fifty seven. One two three minus two million and seventy something. One two three. That's two point seven million crowns roughly. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll do the proper numbers in the room. Okay. But if I were crowns, that's three hundred and sixteen thousand dollars back. Mm -hmm. So if we take out 
We take five percent. Um, yeah. Yeah, we take five percent. You're hundred k. On anything. Right? Yeah. So the first hundred thousand dollars, we don't take any performance fee from. Okay. So if I subtract hundred k or to three hundred and and sixteen k, that's two hundred and sixteen k, and the five percent of that, that's. Uh, ten thousand eight hundred dollars. It, it should be a little bit higher because I rounded down. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. So ten thousand eight hundred dollars. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So that's like seven thousand eight hundred pounds. Okay. I'll, so yeah, obviously we'll we actually build them in pounds. Okay. Good first month. Very good first month. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, do you see the, do the room see, to scale? Do you see they want to scale to one hundred fifty thousand uh, Swedish yeah. crown? How much is that in pounds or dollars? They, they, want, they want us to spend 500 kb this, this weekend. What's well, a 250 a day? Yeah, that's around 30 grand a day. Dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, some, some of the products aren't keeping the rows as high as, as ideal. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, be a challenge. Okay, well, um, yeah, if you can just go ahead and just do the final numbers in, in the loom and just. Uh, just, yeah, just send over to Loom um, uh, after your interview, um, just with all yeah. the final numbers and stuff like that. And I'll, I'll build them in like an hour or so when, when I see that Loom come through. Because, um, mm -hmm. yeah, speaking of <laughs> speaking of spending 30K a day for this client, um, you need to get on that interview uh, right. and, and help us find our new performance marketer. <laughs> all right, perfect. Cheers. Peace out. Bye. Sure. All right, guys, so just finished up with my second last call of the day for a super secret project. It's not really super secret, but um, yeah, I won't talk about it in today's video. Um, yeah, it is currently 5.41 p.m. here in the UK, and I got one final call in the day, and that is a client onboarding call. So uh, you know, let's head into that. I'll probably do a screen record and uh, drop some clips in. Better contact. Because, yeah, that, that's the thing. You've got the product. You've got, like, you've got, like, three out of four of the pieces of the equation in place. It's just if you can get this product to haul in quick. Because, I mean, here, yeah. like, 60,000 euros worth of product, like, just consider that sold. Yeah, just yeah. consider that. So, like, it's just, that's not much for us to move. Um, so... Well. <laughs> We, we haven't we haven't run out okay so. okay well well i, I I'm, I'm the one who makes the big claims and then danny's the one who yeah. sh shouts at me um, <laughs> um no but i mean it's just like as you said you you've done that you've had sixty thousand what days before you said yeah yeah not not with not with this product only okay well but it, it was the, it was the best seller so. okay well yeah still um, i mean but indeed, uh, I think we have to, or I have to think bigger and we know the potential and it's not like a big gamble or something. Hmm. It's just indeed what you said, uh, shipping should the be main, faster. Yeah, the, the main thing is you, well, you know this product works. Yeah. 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 Um, and indeed, yeah, this, this supplier has has made like 10,000 packages already, mm -hmm. uh, but we can ship that to another supplier or whatever, but, mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll make it work and now uh, place a new order. Okay. All right. Perfect. So ladies and gents, I wrapped up with all my calls for today. It is currently like 625 ish. Um, uh, Danny sent that. Uh, so let me, actually, let me put this down. Let me explain kind of the way we do things at the agency. Is that pop that up slightly? Oh, there we go. So the way we think, uh, do things at the agency um, at the moment, around like seventy-ish percent, I'd say, or uh, yeah, probably around seventy percent of our agency revenue actually comes from performance fees. Yeah, seventy percent. I'd say seventy percent. I was gonna say like sixty, but yeah, I go as far as say seventy at the moment. So obviously when it comes to performance fees, um, a client is billed. So for example, this client, this is actually their first month with us. So we bill our performance fee in this client's example, in this client's case, it was 1600 pounds. That's just our base retainer. Now it has been around like 34 ish days since they signed. So it's actually now been like 37 ish days, basically like a week since their billing date. Right. Um, and a week after their billing date, Danny, who's my CMO comes in and basically goes through all of our goes through all of the ad accounts, all the different uh, uh, platforms. Now, it's very easy to do this 
with our client reporting system that we give uh, all the students inside of CPA. Let me move that away. But um, yeah, so so we do that. We we gather the grand total. Then we minus any double purchases, any issues in terms of attribution tracking. Then also minus the ad spend, and that kind of gives us our grand total. So um, I'll pop it up on the screen, but also just. Uh, I'll, I'll pop it up on the video, but also just have it in front of me. So we did with this client, this is Swedish client. We did 4.7 million uh, Swedish crown uh, revenue, and we spent 2.1 million uh, Swedish crown in our first 30 days, which uh, basically leaves a return on ad spend. So converting to dollars of $323,000. So we made this client $323,000 return on ad spend. Now in our deal, this client, before they came to us, was doing around 120, 130 ish thousand a month return on ad spend in dollars. Now we wanted to give ourselves a little margin of safety. So we set the benchmark at hundred thousand dollars. So we went, Hey, for the first hundred thousand dollars, we're not going to take any performance fee because you guys can already achieve this without us. Right? So we don't want to make money if you guys are already getting the same result that we'll get you. Right? So we only take a 5% return on ad spend on anything above hundred thousand dollars. So in this case, we only took 5% on $223,000. So, um, that comes out to $11,177. And by the way, there's like Danny, like uh, rounded up in the text, but in the loom, it's like the full actual numbers. So that's $11,177 is our performance fee for the first month. Uh, so a five figure performance fee for the first month, but in, but I live in London, you know, I'm a British company. So we charge all of our clients at the agency in pounds. So that comes out to 8,061 pounds plus 1600 pounds, which is our base fee. So the entire sort of total for the client in the first month was 9,600 pounds, which I believe comes out to like uh, 11,000 plus like 1600. So that's like $2,200. So I think that's like 13,000 uh, billable from this client. So what I'm going to do right now is where's my phone? My phone is here. What I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to uh, bill them as you can see right here. So you can see 5% ROAS performance fee first month, 8,160. You can see I'm going to press pay automatically and then I'm going to show you my guys' iPhone and then I'm going to get Tristan to, um, I'm going to get Tristan to blur it out as, as best as he can. So send, let's hope their bank doesn't decline. We'll get Tristan to blur out their name, but unfortunately, yeah, let me put that down there. Unfortunately, sometimes this uh, happens. Uh, is uh, a stripe. Let me just check. You know, unfortunately, sometimes this stuff happens. I mean, uh, you know, when you're doing like a five five figure sum, uh, yeah, come, comes back a do not honor. So yeah, I, I, sh I should be able to do this without revealing any sensitive client information. You can see right here, um, the bank returned the decline code do not honor. So basically, what do not honor uh, means is the bank basically just declined it. Like the client has enough money, there's no issues there. The bank just declined it because it's a larger than usual amount. Probably, so I'm just gonna message the client um, right now and let him know that, hey, the payment got declined. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much that, guys. Uh, there'll probably be a last few little bit of the vlog. Now, this vlog will probably go out like a week after um, uh, I recorded, or maybe like or maybe like five, six days after I recorded. So I'll throw in a, like 100% it would have come in. So I'll throw in a screenshot right now of the payment. Um, or maybe even it comes in later today, but, but yeah, that's a little bit about how we bill at the agency and a little bit about, um, yeah, what kind of the first month retainer or performance fee looks like for kind of one of our, um, average to higher ticket clients. Now, when Danny dropped the loom to the clients to let them know, uh, the billable, which I think the last one was like 8,000 or like 8,400 or something like that. But, um, the client actually came back and was like, Hey, heads up. You actually started five days after because obviously we didn't start from the day that we build. The ads actually went live like five days later. Uh, I'll drop that message just here. Obviously, at the end of the day, we always show the client the loom. And then if there's any amendments, usually what we do on Stripe is you can actually do a partial refund if there's ever a case where we've over attributed sales and we kind of retroactively find that out. Or actually, in this case, there was five days where we took performance fees where we, we shouldn't. There was actually also an ad account where we should have taken performance fees and we didn't. So I actually brought it up slightly as well. Anyways, the final total and they actually paid us in dollars. So we ended up receiving in pounds uh, was 9,900 US dollars. 
Uh, so we received 7,000 pounds. I'm just looking at my bank account. And, and I'll go ahead and throw up the screenshot confirmation on Slack and I'll also show you guys right now. So as you can see, they sent 9,900 US dollars and I ended up receiving 7,000 pounds. So there was a little bit of transfer fees taken. So it wasn't quite a five figure performance fee for this month, but between the $9,900 performance fee in the first month plus uh, are billable with them, which is just a you know small $2,200 retainer that comes out to $11,000 billable in the first month with this client. Um, so yeah, definitely a great client. And Danny thinks that we're gonna do around 15,000 pounds, around like $22,000 in just performance fees uh, in the second month. So yeah, very, very quickly ramping up with this client. They're an awesome client to have. Uh, we've had a great time with them. And yeah, with no further ado, let's go back seven days to the rest of the vlog. All right, so wrapped up with today's <laughs> calls, about to have dinner in like 15 minutes. You guys probably know who this is. Actually, do you think they know who you are? I'm not sure, but why don't I tell them? Okay, tell them. So I'm basically in the real estate niche. I talk about finance, cryptocurrency. Go ahead, go to my channel. It's at Amara Riva for everything to do with finance and business and so, smart stuff. Yeah, so ladies and gents, we'll drop, uh, I'll get Tristan to drop Amara's Instagram and her YouTube. I said she's a massive, massive <laughs> finance YouTube channel. Um, top crypto picks? Totally. Yeah, what are they? Oh, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. All right, so, because this is a realistic day in the life agency owner edition, this is a realistic Friday night at the house. <laughs> so, I just got a gift from my friend Lol, and you guys will see my live reaction. Why is this box so big? I, I, I really don't, don't know. know. That's oh. a very long note. Okay, I will read that off camera. Okay. Lord? <laughs> Wait. I don't know what's that. I legit don't know what's that. Why? I think that's just like Wait, the packaging. Is it just like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I procedure, Iman. Procedure. Trust the process, let's see. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, you, you got the sizing right as well. I saw I saw the length. I, this, know, it's not I, in here. I knew you wanted a long one. Okay, I'm actually stressed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where, where's my linen shirts? <laughs> oh, it's it's actually so cool. I wow. wow. <laughs> Magnet alert. Chick magnet. <laughs> Excuse me. He's taken, but it's okay. Alright, there we go. Yeah, it feels I'm pretty ready for Maldives. Yeah. Amazing. This is so sick. It is. The box is intense. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, that concludes a realistic day in the life of an agency owner. Normally, I... Number one agency owner. It's like your mom. Yeah, literally. You go, son. Anyways, normally I do keto, but it's Friday night. Gonna have some carbs, so ordered some Chinese. Gonna enjoy. And... <laughs> <laughs> all right anyways oh this is spicy <laughs> all right anyways as you can uh, tell i am super rusty at vlogging so if you guys enjoyed watching my pain at vlogging leave a like down below i'm going to maldives next week so if you guys want to see a maldives vlog let me know because i definitely was not intending on filming anything out there i was just going to draw maldives myself maldives vlog maldives vlog smash that like button smash that like button. okay wait, actually you know what i'll just set a challenge Okay, if this video yeah. if this video gets if this video gets a thousand likes in the first four days, I'll do a Maldives vlog. So there you go. I'm gonna make sure that happens. <laughs> she, she, she's gonna get a bot. <laughs> hey, look! If you enjoyed that video, I went ahead and picked out another special video that I know you're gonna find immensely valuable. You can find it right there. I know you're gonna love it, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, she's yeah. gonna get a bot. I'm gonna be like, guys, I'm gonna show my boobs. <laughs> <laughs>